Do you regard black magic as being purely fictitious, or is there some truth in it? Some truth? 100% truth. There is nothing fictitious about black magic, in any way whatever. It is a fact. It is a fact uh, which has existed for several thousand years. I mean, when we talk about black magic, we are talking about Satanism, necromancy, alchemy, witchcraft, the worship of uh, Satan, um, the worship of dark forces, whether it's voodoo, juju, whether it's something practiced in the Western world or the Eastern world, uh, whether it's uh, easily defined or not easily defined, the order of the left-hand path, the, the following of this, the following of that. It is basically the worship of the force of evil as embodied by Satan, Lucifer, the princes of darkness and their legions and so on. In a very simple sense, of course, it goes much more deeply than that. It is a fact. It is a desperately dangerous fact. It does exist. It exists around us today. Satanic ceremonies will be happening in Britain tonight. Very definitely. Ask any priest, ask any member of the forces of law and order, and they will tell you that Satanism as such, it's there, and it has been for thousands of years. Man has worshipped the devil longer than he has worshipped, um, perhaps, an established religious figure. Do you think you're in any danger in mimicking it in front of the camera? No, that's an interesting question, because uh, I must admit that it did enter our minds when we were performing some of these ceremonies. You see, I am playing, as I told you, a priest. The various ceremonies that are carried out by the, the priest, in this case myself, and the members of his group or coven, are blasphemous ceremonies, totally blasphemous and totally profane. They have to be, that is to say, they must be, profane and blasphemous to be effective. This is part of the ritual and part of the belief of these people that in order to make any kind of ceremony totally effective, it must be the exact diametrical opposite of the real ceremony. That is to say, if you make the sign of the cross, you do it like that, upside down. If you are going to carry out a satanic ceremony, whether it's a baptism or a particular group of people doing something like trying to raise an elemental or trying to create a, the, the, the perfect situation for an evil spirit or trying to produce evil vibrations and so on, they plug in, so to speak, the force of evil, like plugging in on a switchboard with a telephone. Um, in order for this to be effective, it must be carried out, as I've already said, by a consecrated person, i.e. a priest, and it must also be carried out on consecrated ground. Now, in this film, I, as a priest, am carrying out these ceremonies, like baptism, in the name of the Dark Lord, in a real church. Now, obviously, I'm an actor. At least I hope people think I am. And I am therefore an actor playing a part. So are the other people in front of the camera who are taking part in the ceremony with me. We are all acting. I asked the parents of the baby, the real baby that I baptized in this real church in a blasphemous way, if they objected, if it worried them, this five-week-old baby. And the parents who are very young said, no, it doesn't worry us. We are Catholics. Our child will be baptized by a Catholic priest. We will tell him about this, but it doesn't worry us. And the father gave the most sensible reason for this. He said, it's only a film. And if you can think of it in that way, fine. I have a rather vivid imagination, and some of the people who were working with me in this sequence were also um, discussing this. And we felt a little uneasy. You know, you are saying terrible things, and you are saying it on consecrated ground. But then the other side of you takes over, the logical side, and says, look, we're only actors doing this, you know. We're not doing it for real. We were sort of looking at the roof to see if there was any sign of it falling in on top of us, but nothing happened. And I think we were far more worried about dropping the baby, to be quite honest. Uh, while we're on that subject, it might be interesting to, to say, uh, amusing, uh, to mention, that um, the baby certainly got its own back on me. When it came to the actual baptism of the child, I have already told you that the parents didn't object because I was making the sign of the cross on the child's forehead in supposedly blood, upside down, and, and baptizing the child into the service of the Dark Lord. And uh, the child, uh, obviously, was getting a bit bored and a bit cold and uh, didn't like being taken away from his parents and held in my arms and then held in somebody else's arms. And uh, it was making a lot of noise. And I started to speak very quietly, and there was complete and total silence, which impressed everybody. And I, myself, uh, thought, well, you know, it's listening was staring at me with rigid concentration. And I suddenly realized why there was this total silence and this rigid concentration. The child was retaliating in the way in which it knew best, all over me <laughs> and all over <laughs> the lady who was holding the child. Well, 
All I can say is it speaks volumes for our self-control that none of us broke out because, of course, it was extremely funny. Why has there been a resurgence of interest in the subject? I honestly don't know. I've been asked this question all over the world. I've talked to people who are serious professional students of the occult. I've talked to a man who wrote a whole book about the occult in America called The Occult Explosion. I think it's a form of escapism. It's the fact that in this day and age, we do live in a somewhat disagreeable world in many respects that I don't have to even talk about. Everybody knows this is a fact. And people are constantly seeking for a way out, whether it's to gratify their own desires or whether it's to um, find a way out of their own loneliness or whether it is looking for power or physical indulgence or whatever you like to call it. I think it's always this question of people looking for a road out, an exit, an escape, some form of safety valve which will help them to blow off steam. They don't realize how dangerous it is to get involved in this respect because inevitably they start at a lower level and then they get absolutely under the control of the bosses because the bosses exist. They have the same ranks in the church of evil as they have in the good church. They do. They have ranks in the hierarchy of the priesthood just as you have bishops and deacons and archbishops and cardinals and so on. You have various ranks and grades, like Magister Templi, the master of the temple, Ipsissimus, the sort of number one top man. And this is not just occult, um, occult uh, writing for the sake of writing. This is a fact, and people really believe in this. As a matter of fact, there is a church in Los Angeles called the Church of Satan, which is run by a man called Anton Sandor Lavey who has written two books. I'm not sure that he intended to be taken too seriously, otherwise, obviously, if it was uh, true and complete Satanism, it wouldn't be permitted. But he sent me a copy of two of his books uh, because he'd seen a picture I'd done with Sammy Davis Jr. in which I'd played the devil, a very sort of modern up-to-date devil, Lucifer. The thing was called Poor Devil. The film was called Poor Devil. It was very amusing. It was a comedy. And he sent me a copy of one of these books uh, which was headed um, Regi Satanas, which means uh, Satan is king, more or less. And he wrote underneath to Christopher Lee, uh, a fine actor and a perfect devil, <laughs> and from Sandor the Bay. Well, I took that as a compliment. I don't think that's intended to be taken too seriously. That is all out in the open. But the real thing is something which I wouldn't be prepared to discuss. I have never attended a ceremony of this kind. I would not even begin to discuss what actually takes place during a black mass because it is so appallingly blasphemous and so repulsive and so unbelievably foul. Not just a question of hundreds of years of ritual, but what actually happens, what people actually do, and what is done to the host and what is done to the cup and so on. Something I wouldn't be prepared to discuss in public. Enough people have written about it. Joris Karl Heismans wrote about it. Can Dennis Wheatley has too, of course. How did you come to play the part of Scaramanga in the Jay's Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun? Can I, just before we get into that, just make a point that, uh, by, the, by the way, that what I've been discussing and what I've been telling you about all these um, terrible things, it does not come from inside knowledge by any manner of means. I don't, as I said, have a private line of any kind which feeds me this sort of information. I know no more about it than anybody else who can read about it in the book.